Mm, mm. Do Italians make better violins than French, German, American, Australian? Good question, huh? It's a little bit like eating pizza, you know? Let's see a little bit more what's going on here. Mm. First, finish my pizza and then we go into the detail. Hello, hello, back again. This is Edgar from Cremona, Italy. Italian violin making. The big deal is, do Italians still make the best violins? They made them in the past. Prices are skyscraper rocking like crazy. And Germans, French, well, they all make great instruments, but they're never as an Italian instrument. Cremonese is the top of the top, and then there are all the other ones. Italy is famous for fashion, style, and that was in the past, and it's even nowadays the same thing. Now, in this video, I'm risking to generalize, but there must be something that's still even nowadays people are willing to have an Italian instrument. All the other ones from Romania, in Austria, in Germany, in France, in Belgium, in Holland, there are violin making traditions and they are kept on. They create violin making schools, but they can't beat with Italian style and with Italian making. And everybody has the originals from Italy and they all imitate the Stradivari and the Guarnieri. So what is actually the difference? If you want more stories like this, just let me your comment. Beside that you have to subscribe, yeah, otherwise you Write me what you think about it. Huh? Just when I go back and I came to Italy, beside that we made vacation in Italy and that was already something very funny when I imagined these young kids were driving on their motorcycles on one wheel and uh, trying to impress my three sisters. <laughs> You had the impression that people are more freer here. You just asked yourself, how does that whole country work, you know? When you go a little bit into the detail and you go on the main square and you have a cup of coffee, if you just watch how Italians order the coffee for a single small espresso, they have like 20 options. And then they down the coffee and then they back to work. They're perfectly dressed up style in Italy makes part of common lived sense. Everybody is styled out, but it's different than like in Japan or in Korea where people are on one style and then they are super extreme in that style. Here in Italy, it's a little bit more soft going and that when it's traduced to violin making, you can tell that it's a little bit less finished the finishing, but there is a certain concept of beautiness and style, which is on a chart of what is more important. Definitely style. The beautiness is certainly higher than in other cultures. When other cultures purchase these things, they buy it because it's Italian style, but then they combine it wrong. I believe that I, as a not Italian, I'm a little bit more sensible for this kind kind of tiny details. And that's why it's for me a little bit more easy to detect these small details. And that's also the reason that violin makers outside from Italy are maybe the most important experts when it comes to Stradivari, Guarnieri, old Italian violin makers. If you are not born in that culture, it tiny change of something, you immediately recognize it and that makes you become an expert on it. Just as a description, let's say, often arching. A German takes a lot of attention to make it perfect symmetric. Italians, they don't care that much. It's more important that the concept of the arching is correct but then they don't care if it is now symmetric. They just make it and it's easy. Look at Guarnieri, even Stradivari. If you would take a picture of Stradivari and you look at it, he was certainly Italian, had great style, super finished and very, very perfection making. 
but if you twist one side over the other one you will see how not it is symmetric but he had the ability the eye to adjust it and to make it appear symmetric they're all a little bit not symmetric that's a ability which comes from the eye when we look at violin makers at the scroll we immediately understand if it's a german or a french italian instrument we even can understand a little bit of the character of the maker because it's difficult to hide behind these things you can recognize these things i know that you expected now exactly the details but it's more a concept of how you take these details into reality you know what you like and then you have to put it into reality germans are on perfection they think about what they do that's why they make things become perfect the italian sound is created probably by these concepts which they somehow captured in the right constellation between arching and thicknesses simpliness would be the nicest and best description for italian thicknesses the top is more or less a very regular thickness germans are like captured that underneath the bridge it must be thicker on the top and then it becomes smaller that makes a beautiful sound but not an italian sound the arching when they're so perfect in a way or in another they are slightly different over the years these things become less and less but still you can tell especially on the scroll when you look at it oh, seems like german you know and then up oh, it was like Günther Lobe who made the violin great maker by the way from germany peter Greiner. great german makers make super great instruments famous for their quality everywhere in the world we are not the only one here in italy making great instruments i hope that this video a little bit makes you understand that there is still difference between certain areas in the world where how they make certain things and italians from my point of view make the best instruments even nowadays i'm very curious what you think about it and i want to read what your comments are about wherever you come from and you make instruments do it great and you are a great maker but you have to be honest you make it different most important of all subscribe to my channel but now i go and heat it up and then i eat it okay Ciao. One detail I've forgotten, the best pizza is La Pendola. If you happen to be in Cremona, it's a very big thing pizza. And the guy, very Italian, Pasquale. Just to say, Edgar told me that I have to eat the pizza. Yeah, and then I will, he will smile maybe.